this tiny little thing is a rechargeable lithium cell. I don't know what the capacity is. It's originally designed for use in things like styluses for writing on tablets and things like that, but it also found a use in the fishing industry for these little rod tip lights where you plug it into the end of the light and this cover then screws on and it's got o-rings to seal against water and grass and there is a i'll zoom down this a little bit there's a little clip system here that when you unhook it it lets you place this over whatever you're placing it over and clip it back down and it secures it onto Whatever it is, I'd guess it's just to show that when the line is moving, moving at the end when a fish has been caught. However, the charger for this is quite interesting. If I just grab a convenient power bank, like this one, and I plug the charger in, initially, two blue lights light up. And when you plug these in, they clip in fairly firmly. And then the lights have turned red but interestingly when it comes to the end of charge instead of just going blue to show that the charge has been completed or or going out or something like that they actually start alternating between red and blue so i'm not sure if that works the charge current appears to be in the region of approximately eight milliamps so uh, i'll have to check i'll have to try and find what capacity these are also very tempted to open one of them and see what's inside also tempted to open one of these uh, in fact, we'll do that right now. Let's grab a pair of side cutters and push the gubbins out this and see if we can actually get the the circuitry out because I think it is just literally an LED with a little housing that uh, is designed to um, press over the end of the cell without any current limiting. That's kind of kind of broken. It has completely broken. Uh, can I push something out with a screwdriver? This may or may not work. I need a screwdriver that isn't, like, got the safety plastic here. Oh, this isn't going to fit. Uh, right, one moment, please. Yeah, that's very simple. That is literally just a little plastic housing with the LED leads pushed in and the leads bent slightly so that as this gets pushed up, it simply connects to the leads now did i break this led or have they cracked the ice in this just by cutting the lens off i think they've cracked the ice in this to get a wider spread of light i could be wrong though i may have destroyed it in the process of taking it apart but that is it there's no current limiting it's relying purely on the cell impedance ability of the cell su to supply current and the led voltage shooting up a little bit that's a bit rough but hey that's what they did anyway let's take a look at the charger can we get the charger open I've totally stabbed myself mm, with that LED lead. Not to worry, this happens from time to time. So let's see if we can get this open. Is it going to be glued shut or clipped shut? It may actually be clipped shut. It looks unusually tight. Oh, no, no, look, look at it is cracking apart in a grudging way. Is this going to come apart easily. If not, I shall pause momentarily. And if I pause momentarily, I'll just take pictures and reverse engineer it, which is, you know what? That is exactly what I'll do. I shall pause and uh, take some pictures and we'll see what it looks like inside. One moment, please. It took a bit of squeezing, but I have now extracted the circuit board. I also took some pictures, reverse engineered it and opened one of the cells. Quite interesting inside, not actually what I was expecting. So let's zoom down, and here is the back of the circuit board first, just for reference. The front of the circuit board is much more interesting than the back. We have a dedicated microcontroller being used in a way I've never seen one being used before. And it controls two LEDs with a polarity reversal and two outputs. So it's got one pair of pins. I don't know why they've done it this way, but they've got a pair of pins common together, maybe for increased current, and then they've got a red and a blue pin that can drive these LEDs via these 1K resistors. They then have 51 ohm resistors going to the cells that are being charged via capacitors and via these Schottky diodes. Um, I think it's better to just skip straight to the circuit board here because there's not a lot to see. Uh, incoming USB supply, capacitor across it, straight to the chip, 
that's more or less it. Not too much. So I shall bring in the schematic. I've abbreviated it very slightly, just to keep it simpler. So we'll zoom down a little bit. The way I've abbreviated it, I've just shown one of the cell charging circuits here. So there's the incoming USB power supply. It's got a capacitor across it for stability straight to the microcontroller with the negative rail going to the lithium cell as well. To charge the lithium cell, current is limited. The, the microcontroller turns the output on. Current is limited by this 51 ohm resistor. And this capacitor I initially thought was for stability, but I think it's actually for sensing the cell voltage. And it then goes via the Schottky diode, presumably to avoid current flowing back when it's disconnected. Um, and it goes via the Schottky diode to the lithium cell, which means the voltage across this cell will be the lithium cell plus roughly about 0.2 volt of the Schottky diode. So they're aiming for 4.4 volts-ish. What I reckon happens is that the processor most of the time has this output positive charging up that cell, but every so often it just converts it to an input and then looks at the voltage across this capacitor to actually see what the cell's been charged up to, plus that Schottky diode. And then once it detects that it's reached that threshold, it uh, then starts flashing the LEDs accordingly. There's a 1K resistor for the blue LEDs, there's a 1K resistor for the red LEDs, and then actually two common connections from the microcontroller for the common for all the LEDs. And uh, when it wants to illuminate, say, both red LEDs, because the cells are charging, it will basically power via this 1K resistor and it will alternate the polarity in this pin so that they're both jiggling backwards very quickly. When one cell is charged, it will then, or when there's no cells connected at all and it displays blue because it can detect that from this higher voltage here, it uh, will jiggle the two blue LEDs. However, when one cell is fully charged, it will do for those particular cells, it will uh, alternate the red and the blue just by jiggling polarity again and uh, alternating between these two resistors. Quite an interesting approach. But this circuitry down here is just multiplied by two and that's it. It's very simple. A bit perplexing to reverse engineer because I've not seen that style of circuitry before. Let's take a look at the lithium cell. I dremeled one open. I shall zoom back out again for this. I was expecting a little spiral of the foils with a connection to the outside shell, much like additional battery, and then a tab from the centre. But no, this is very similar to a double A or triple A alkaline cell or a zinc chloride cell. And what I've got here is the aluminium case is one electrode and its material is pressed against this. Now, a normal lithium cell has an aluminium electrode and a copper electrode. One is graphite on it, one is lithium. Uh, cobalt, lithium iron cobalt, something like that. And uh, they usually have the two foils coated in these chemicals. Lithium iron cobalt comes to mind as being the, the one, but uh, then they've got a plastic separator. In this case, they've packed in the outer layer of the chemical. They've got a layer here, a separator here, the membrane, and then the inner layer just has this thread this sort of chaffed rod just rammed down into it as the central electrode onto that material and then going through a tight rubber seal that's been crimped this whole lot's been put into the aluminium tube and then it's had this uh, rubber seal it's very very reminiscent of an actual traditional alkaline cell so this is one electrode going to the inner material the separator and then the outer material is against the outer electrode. And the outer one is uh, the positive in this application, uh, possibly just because that suited the chemistry of the uh, lithium to have the aluminium with its uh, coating of the appropriate chemical. But that is it. Very interesting. It is relying a lot on the impedance of the cells to limit the current through the LEDs. The one that was a uh, chipped, the end was chipped off. I did discover the end. I had physically chopped the LED in half, but that's okay. Um, but ultimately, it is just purely relying. I don't even know if it's going to work anymore. Oh, it does. still works. Uh, it is still relying just on the very low current capability of uh, the cells to limit the current through the LEDs. 
And it means that initially it'll start off super bright, but then it'll get dimmer and dimmer. But as it's getting dimmer and the voltage is matching the LED more, it'll just glow for a very long time after that. I haven't tested it. I would expect it to glow for several hours before needing recharged. But there we have it. Quite an interesting thing. A very unusual charging circuit. Probably better suited to these little cells because it's not as accurate for the bigger cells. Um, and these aren't less... These are much less likely to just blow up if they if, if they get overcharged because there's not much chemistry in them. They've got a fairly high impedance. But that is it. Interesting. Quite unusual to take apart. Very interesting circuitry indeed.